In this week's episode, I'm going to dive into a somewhat debated topic, questioning if drones enhance or weaken our creativity as photographers. At this point in our Newfoundland adventure, we're in our last days here on the island, and I found myself on the west coast heading towards the ferry, which is in Port of Basque. We are currently heading to shoot sunset here on the rock. This is probably going to be the last episode of my Newfoundland content because I came over here to actually take the ferry back to the mainland. I haven't booked the ferry yet, not entirely sure when I'm going to leave, but when I got over here, the fall color is in full swing. I didn't actually expect to see this much color here on the coast, but what's really unique about this area that I'm driving in is it's mountains coming out of the ocean, reminiscent of Norway over here, and there's so much color on the mountains and it is absolutely gorgeous. I came here last night. I got here just in time to shoot some sunset photo. I'll put it on the screen now. I haven't even seen it yet. I don't know if it worked out, but it is just spectacular. So we're going out to try to find some sunset shots this time with more time, more time to fly the drone, more time to take some nice photos, more time to bring you along with me. So we got to get there. We got to drive for a bit. We got to see what we can find, but I promise you it's going to be absolutely gorgeous. The clouds are clearing. It looks like we're going to get some spectacular light. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for joining in. Thanks for tuning in. Glad you're here. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. It's incredible just how much more this island had to show me, even though it felt like I had seen it all up until this point. Fall was in peak color at the time, but the spots were really sporadic. So I was taken by surprise when I arrived in this area, considering just how much more colorful it was than the previous area I was in. I found myself flying the drone a bunch and not really taking the time to talk to the camera at all, which got me thinking, has my drone made me a lazy photographer? So ironically, as it would have it, the majority of this episode is actually filmed completely on the drone. So sit back, relax, put me on in the background, and let me show you just how absolutely beautiful this spot is from a bird's eye view. The first drone I owned was a Phantom 2, circa 2012, back in the day when you still had to attach your own GoPro, program your own IMU, and flying was definitely a bit more complicated. I'm glad we quickly moved past those days. Since then, the presence of drones has drastically changed landscape photography by providing a completely new perspective while also acting as a bit of a crutch to access heights in minutes rather than hours. I found this was happening quite often here on the west side of Newfoundland, but was it because I couldn't manage a decent image from the ground? Or was it because the perspective in the air was just so much more representative of this area that it's all I wanted to capture? I have to admit that drones save my butt sometimes. Many times when I'm in transit or completely unfamiliar with an area, like I am here, the ability to just put the drone into the air and find a quick composition as the sky is exploding is super valuable and has happened many times over the course of making these videos. Photos like these were all better than anything I could capture from the ground at the time simply because I could find a unique perspective in minutes rather than hours. Thus it starts to weigh in my mind. Am I an imposter? Is this hindering my creativity? And Am I relying on this tool too much? While I did lean on the accessibility of my drone in this area, it was with good reason. What felt special about this place to me was the mountains covered in color right on the coast of the ocean. 
Capturing those elements from the drone was quite easy, as you can tell from the footage, but much more difficult from the ground. Thus, I spent a lot of the best light over the next few days prioritizing photos from the drone instead of my cameras. This is a choice we all make as landscape photographers, whether you realize it or not. For every sunset spot we pick, we're giving up an opportunity somewhere else. You could even say that even if you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. Good morning, everyone. So I don't really have a shot in mind, so we're probably gonna do what we did last night, which is drive around and look for stuff that catches my eye. I Meaning it could be a little frantic. It's not gonna be slow paced. Might not even take anything, because as you can tell, there's not really any clouds in the sky, but we're gonna see what we can get up to, see what we can find this morning. Thanks for joining along, and uh, thanks for being here. I go long periods without using the drone. This spring, if you followed my channel, we went up the east coast chasing waterfalls, and I don't think I launched the drone for months. But then I find myself in spots like Utah, or Norway, Alaska, or definitely here in Newfoundland, and the perspective as drone can provide is unmatched. Many times areas just have this feeling of being a drone spot in the same way that areas work better with a wide angle lens, or maybe a spot that requires a polarizing filter. Lost the sun and I lost the feeling That I have something I believe in I don't know who I am this year Came so close but I'm nowhere near So, is it a crutch or a tool? I like to think back to the time when I wasn't paying attention to photography and I was probably far too young to remember anything about what was really going on when the digital age of cameras overtook film. I have to imagine that there was purists out there shouting loudly that taking thousands of images was going to dilute the art of photography. But the reality is, it just made our lives easier, enabling us to take images unlike anything we could before, and to me, drones are just another tool in our toolbox, like a new focal length, a faster frame rate, or better autofocus. It enables us to capture a completely new perspective while also sometimes saving a lot of time or steps in the process. Okay, we are currently on a dirt road, traveling to the coast. It is, the light is just absolutely insane right now. Not much time before sunset. That seems to be the theme of this video. Uh, me just chasing lights probably voiceovering a lot of this because I have not had a lot of time to talk and just 
hunting around for some really epic conditions. So I'm gonna pay attention to the road now, uh, since it's getting kind of rocky uh, and stuff like that, and see what we can find. Ah, my camera. Another added benefit is a refreshing feeling of doing something new. While I'm vocal against focusing too much on gear or what you're shooting on, I also enjoy and recognize that new perspectives or variations in our work can help subside burnout. Sure, you can shoot your entire life on just a 35mm lens, and maybe you have, but for me, I need a bit more variation in my work. Thus, when I go months without flying the drone, and I finally find a killer spot to get it back in the air, it's like I'm a big kid again enjoying photography for the first time. So, am I lazy? Am I an imposter posing with a camera? Okay, I'm definitely lazy sometimes, and I will gladly admit that the drone has saved me in a few shoots, because maybe I simply picked the wrong spot, I showed up a little too late, or I didn't make it up the mountain. But that just makes me human, not an imposter. I absolutely love the times where I can't fly the drone, or I'm in areas that have no reason for them, and it really pushes me to branch out and get more creative in my own work. I also love having this tool for locations like here in Newfoundland, because without it, I won't be able to capture a lot of this absolutely gorgeous footage that you've been watching throughout this video or some of the photos. The takeaway here is don't let the loud few ever make you question your work. And don't let that voice inside your head question your own self-worth as an artist and photographer. So whether you shoot digital or you enjoy slowing down with some slides of Velvia 200 or you take to the skies with your drone, just enjoy it. We're so lucky to exist in a world where you have so many choices and tools to capture the beauty of nature that it really can't go wrong. Just make sure you're having a good time. So I hope you've enjoyed this little short video essay. If you did, make sure to check out some of my other content right here on my channel. Maybe you'll even find a rainbow out there somewhere. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Later. <laughs>